is yes. Thank you. Time has expired. Mr. Subi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, when I ran for Congress, I talked about how Washington was broken. But I certainly did not expect the level of political gamemanship, partisanship, and sheer stagnation of policies that would improve the lives of Americans that I'm witnessing today. It is terribly disappointing to me that this committee and its chairman chose to spend our time in questioning an individual that has zero probative value and zero credibility instead of spending our limited time focusing on improving the lives of Americans, creating jobs, or streamlining the functioning of our federal government. Yet here we are, taking testimony from a convicted liar and not someone who has just lied to his clients or family or friends, but testimony from an individual who deliberately and premeditatedly lied to this body. He lied to Congress through false statements and written statements. He lied to Congress through his testimony. He then amplified his false statements by releasing and repeating his lies to the public, including the other potential witnesses. Yet now, we on this committee and the American people are expected to believe Mr. Cohen's testimony. I don't know a juror in America that would believe anything Mr. Cohen says given his past actions and lies. Mr. Cohen, you stood before multiple congressional committees before today and raised your right hand and swore an oath to be honest. Is that correct? That is correct. And you lied to those congressional committees. Is that correct? Previously? Correct. Yes, sir. You stated that Trump never directed you to lie to Congress. Is that correct? That's correct. Therefore, you lied to Congress on your own accord and then admitted to lying to Congress. Correct? I've, I've already stated my piece on that. I knew what he wanted me to do. I was staying on party line. But he never directed you to lie to Congress? He did not use those words, no. In your evidence that you provided this committee a mere two hours before the hearing started, were payments made to you by Mr. Trump, correct? Amongst other things, yes. Yet other than your testimony here today, there is absolutely no proof that those specific payments were for those specific purposes. Is that correct? It's my testimony that the check that I produced as part of this testimony, the 35000 and then the second check that's signed by Alan Weisselberg and Don Trump Jr., were two checks out of the 11 that were meant for the reimbursement of the hush money payment to Stormy Daniels. So in your testimony on page 13, you claim, and I quote, Mr. Trump directed me to use my own personal funds from a home equity line of credit to avoid any money being tracked back to him that could negatively impact his campaign. Do you have any proof of this direction? Just the payment, sir. So no email? Mr. Trump doesn't have email. So no recording? I do not have recordings, no. No text message? Mr. Trump doesn't text message. So no direction other than your testimony today that that's what the payment was for? And the fact that I paid on his behalf, at his direction, the money to Keith Davidson's IOLA account. You're right, there's no other, test, there's no other documentation I have. So nothing that you produce as part of your exhibits prove that President Trump directed you in any way to make that payment? I don't even know how to answer that, sir. Well, it's, it's pretty simple. There's nothing in the evidence that shows, or the exhibits that you provided today, that show that Trump directed you to make those payments. Other than the non-disclosure agreement that has been seized by government authorities and is widely shown, I don't believe there's anybody out there that believes that I just decided to pay $130,000 on his behalf. Well, you were, you were his attorney for over 10 years. That doesn't mean that I pay $130,000. Well, it doesn't also attorney. mean that he wasn't paying you for representation of counsel. Okay. Uh, so how, how did President Trump even knew you had a HELOC? I'm so sorry, sir? How did President Trump even know you had a HELOC? Because we discussed it. Because I told him the same thing, that I didn't want my wife to find out about it. And as an, a, a, one additional... Rudy Giuliani himself came out and expressed that Mr. Trump reimbursed me for the, f for the money that was spent um, to pay Stormy Daniels. And did you tell Chris Como that you had no access to Mr. Trump during October and November of 2016? I'm sorry, I don't know what you're referring to. Uh, your interview with Chris Como. I, I, I would need to see the document. I uh, did you also tell Chris Como that you made these payments without telling Mr. Trump because you wanted to protect Mr. Trump? And I was protecting Mr. Trump. And you told him that you made these payments without telling him? When I said that, if that's what I said to Chris Cuomo, yes. That was my, that was my line. 
And if this unsupported claim was true, then it would be part of an ongoing investigation as evidence of a crime, and the Department of Justice would not let you discuss it during your testimony here today. Is that correct? I don't know. Gentleman's time has expired. Did you answer? Yes, I, I, I did want to say one last thing. Not only did I lie to the American people, I lied to the First Lady when the President called me and I was sitting in a car with a friend of mine and he had me speak to her and explain to the First Lady. So the answer is there, you're, you're, not, you're not accurate and I don't feel good about any of this and this was not my intention. It's Lawrence. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 